Tim, a solid showing and a point on the road at a difficult place to come. Yeah, very much so. Listen, it was a, a very, very good performance. Um, we should have won the game. There's no doubt of that in my mind. Lee Vaughan gets into a great position in the first five minutes and, and scalps his shot across the face of the goal where probably, you know, he, he might do a little bit better. Um, Borley has a probably ain't quite sure what's around him in the second half. He's free and free as a bird in the middle of their 18-yard box. Probably doesn't get a shout. He could have left it to George Carline, who's behind him. George is not the loudest man in the world, as you know. Um, and I thought a couple of turnovers wouldn't have flattered us. I thought we were excellent. Um, I think the first question that Gaz Wild was asked after the Chesterfield game, was, or stat he was given, was that's our first clean sheet since November. Well, in November we played six league matches, won five and drew one. Um, we've uh, now gone, uh, you know, this year from the first at home win three nil and a very very creditable nil nil away on the road to Yeovil. Uh, we looked resilient, fit, strong, committed, uh, and I'm delighted with the performance. And when you look into the areas that you, the team got into, first half and second yeah. half, crowd got a bit edgy. And did you feel there from that point you could have gone? Oh, and I, thought, well, it? I thought we could have nicked it. Yeah, I really did. And, and when I say nicked it, I thought we played really well front foot. I thought our, the way we set up negated their really narrow diamond. So our wing backs were sort of tucked uh, to make sure there was no overloads in there. But then in possession, released to offer some width. I thought maybe. Um, listen. Let's be honest, the pitch is, 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 is shocking. Um, it's in a poor state. It, just didn't, it weren't conducive to try and get good quality crosses in from, from good areas. It's really chopped up. Uh, so, you know, I could criticise and say, one, a little bit more belief when the ball comes in the box because, you know, we, we, we won a lot of first contacts from throws, etc., and didn't get on the bits. And probably, you know, that, that final delivery at times could have been a little bit better. But I thought, I thought we played really well. Um, uh, and against a very, very good team, you know, they're not second in the league because they don't know what they're doing. They've got an excellent manager and a, and a huge squad of very good players. So, you know, uh, once again, uh, I've got to commend my players. You know, they're a, we're a small, trusty band of lads that um, work really hard. Um, they're committed to the football club and I couldn't be prouder of them. And coming into the game, you've gone with a five at the back as well. You're three, three at the back, yeah. three at the back, and that worked to a T as well. I think so. I mean, listen, they play with they play with a four diamond two, uh, and they have done pretty much all season, um, and they're very good at it. Um, so you know, we we can play that. I've got plenty of pace in Goodger and Williams outside of, either side of Howe, who's obviously aerially very good. Um, so when they slid balls down the sides of us, I was, I was confident that we had pace enough to, to deal with that. Um, so 3v2 there, uh, so that matched us up, or even when the wing backs were tucked overloaded a little bit in midfield. Obviously we were two, two up top, um, so we worked a little bit on working with a pair of strikers coming into the game rather than a front three, which we normally deploy. Um, but yeah, I thought the system worked quite well. We flicked around, uh, we, we've played three. Uh, at the start of the season and we went back to our trusted 4-3-3 and got a string of results with it and we just thought that um, looking at the way Yeovil have gone that maybe that was the best way to approach it and I think to, on the most part it worked okay you know. And just finally Darlington on Wednesday in the trophy yeah. and then back into a more uh, big hectic January. Very much so, listen we've got obviously Darlington if we win that then we're at home to Harrogate. If we lose, we've got a free weekend. Uh, and then Boreham Wood, who are in excellent form, you know. Um, again, really good side, good manager. Um, once again, he's pulled a rabbit out of the hat down there and got, got Boreham up, right up, sniffing around, you know. So if he listens to this, he needn't think they're under the radar. They're right in sniffing around. I didn't check, but they were 3 1 up when I looked against Stockport, who were flying. Good team. So, you know, we'll, we'll take one bridge at a time, one game at a time. We've got to go to Darlington, you know, we've made a made it hard for ourselves you know we had the home game and and couldn't see a game out and uh, now we've got to go up there and, and it'll be a tough game and so we'll prepare for that um have a look at the walk, walking wounded and then obviously we'll see what the result is as concern you know as concerns the weekend but as you quite rightly say we're well, thick and fast now we've got the barrow uh, home game and also the barnet game that have to be rearranged within the next 40 odd days so you know they're going to be added to the schedule as well so you know, lot, lots to do, lots of football, but um, pleased to see the boys show some backbone and resilience. You know, back-to-back -back clean sheets, gold dust.